What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is talk about how to analyze categorical variables, more specifically through pie graphs. And I'm gonna show you how to do that through this example over here. Now, if you don't want to write out this example, I have a set of lecture notes that are following these videos. If you're on the site, you could see them at the beginning of the section. You could print them out, or if you're on YouTube, then you could click the link in the description box. You could print out the lecture notes so you don't have to write out all of these examples that are coming up. Some of them are gonna be pretty long with pretty large tables. This table here isn't too bad, but they're gonna get bigger and bigger. So in this example, we have a first year course that has 40 students with the following majors over here. And so notice that 10 of the 40 students are in math, 20 of the 40 are in science, two of the students are in English, and then eight of the students are in arts. Now, before getting into pie graphs, I actually want to do a quick review of the last video where we differentiated between individuals and variables, and I want to relate it to this example. So in that previous video, if you remember, we went over an example where we had a table with the name of each employee working at a company and then their respective position in that company and then their salary. This table wasn't given, I made this table, but from that table, I mentioned how each employee was the, uh, the individual being analyzed and then the position and the salary were the variables or the characteristics of these individuals, of these employees. Now, when you look at this table here, you gotta be careful because if you follow this pattern here where the individual is that leftmost column, like it was in the previous example, you may be forced to think that the major in this example is the individual. the object that's being analyzed. But that's not true. The actual student, the actual students is, are the individuals in this example that are being analyzed. This data, if it was in a more raw form, basically you would have a list of all the students and then you'd have a list of their majors. So the major in this case is the variable that is describing the individuals, which are the students in this case. So you have the list of all 40 students, their majors, and then what we did was we took this raw data here and then we kind of summarized it in this table with the number of students per each major. All right, so just wanted to make a note on that. Kind of subtle. Um, kind of intuitive, but uh, yeah, lots of times students may get confused just when they're given a table, they may think that this here is the individual, um, the object that's being analyzed, but a lot of times it's not the case. You gotta read the whole scenario. Okay, so now with pie graphs, basically what pie graphs do is they show each categorical variable in relation or in proportion to the whole. And so I'm sure you've seen pie graphs before. It's basically a circle. So this here represents 100%. And each of these majors, each of these uh, categorical variables are going to take a certain percentage of this pie here. And so what we actually first have to do is figure out what is the percentage of these majors for these 40 students. Notice that we're given the absolute number of students that are in each major, but we're not given the percentage of the 40. So we gotta figure that out. So the way we would do that is we would take each one, so this 10, for example, we would divide it by 40 and then multiply it by 100. And when you do that, you would end up getting 25%. So this would be 25%, same thing, you would just keep changing this number here. So 20 divided by 40 times 100 would give us 50%. Uh, two divided by 40 times 100 would give us 5%. And 
and then uh, 8 divided by 40 times 100 would give us 20 percent. So sometimes these percentages will be given, but a lot of times they won't be, and you'll have to figure them out in order to draw that uh, pie graph, because you have to know the percentages, the proportion to the whole, to the 100 percent. And so notice that these numbers are pretty smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to split up this pie into quarters. So each of these spaces are 25%. So notice that 25% of the students, 10 of the 40, are in math. So this here would be math. Uh, this would be 25%. 50% are in science. So I'm going to erase this line here. This whole space here is 50%. So this would be science. Um, and then we'll have uh, this remaining 25% has to be split up between 5% of the students being in English, 20% of the students being in art. So this would be, uh, let's put the 5% up here. So this would be uh, English, 5%. And then... Um, the 20% this here would be arts. All right, so that's how you make a pie graph. And notice how all of these numbers here add up to 100%. Now, these numbers were pretty smooth, so it wasn't too big of a deal to uh, draw this pie graph, but a lot of times these numbers aren't going to be as smooth. Like let's say we had a percentage here, maybe 22.3%, and then another percentage was like 36.8%, etc., etc. et cetera. Then this pie graph gets a little bit more challenging to draw. So usually pie graphs are made with, um, with software. But uh, yeah, if the numbers are smooth enough, then making it by hand is not too bad. But uh, most likely, you're not going to have to make a pie graph on your midterm or exam. You're more so going to analyze one, but you never know. They may ask you to make one, so just make sure you understand the process. Make sure that you know you got to get these percentages first before making it. Another thing I want to mention is that you may want to write this down. It's actually going to come up in a future example where you can't always use pie graphs. You can't always use pie graphs to analyze categorical variables. Bar graphs you can always use, which we're going to cover in the next video, but pie graphs, there may be instance, uh, instances where you can't use them. And we're going to go over a scenario, a set of data where that happens. If you want the short reason, basically sometimes these percentages here won't add up to 100%. Right? And if they don't add up to 100%, they may be over 100%, then you can't make this pi here, which adds up to 100. And the reason why is because sometimes the individuals that are being analyzed, they can fall into multiple categories depending on the data. In this case, they can only fall into one. We assume that each of these students are only taking one major, so they have to fall in one of these, and so this is going to add up to 100%, but certain data, individuals can fall into multiple categories, and that's when, when you're adding up that percentage and maybe over 100%, but we will cover that in the future example once we get there.